Good evening, Fatima, Laura, Xiomara, Corina, and Blanca. Natalie, thank you so much for being on time. How was your day today? How was everything? How are you doing? How was your day? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Laura. How are you doing? Mm, just fine. <laughs> oh, you're just fine. That's nice. Are you still at work? Yeah. Okay. Um, are you on your shift or just waiting for the traffic to get um, like lower or reduced? Mm, I stay here for the traffic. Okay, <laughs> let's see. And the rest of you, how are you doing? Are you ready at home or are you still at work? Uh, Natalie? Okay, well, we're going to start. Yesterday we started with the present simple. Do you remember we were making affirmative and negative statement. So today we're going to review a little bit about it, about the third person singular, and also we're going to practice some conversations and the yes, no questions. So let me start sharing screen. Okay. This is the last exercise that we did yesterday. Remember, we were practicing the statement. In this case, we were unscrambling the sentences and we finished this exercise. Ese es el último ejercicio que terminamos ayer, ¿verdad? Y bueno, aquí nos pide que mencionamos cinco actividades que hacemos en nuestro lugar de trabajo. Can you give me some examples? Activities I do. For example, you can say I send emails. Do you send emails? So you can say I send emails. Okay. Join bio emails. So you can say, I write reports. What are your activities? What activities do you do at your workplace? Can you mention some? A it's correct, I analyze data. Yes, it is. Yes, I analyze data. Mm -hmm. What else? What else do you do? Take a uh at x rate oh you take x-rays yes oh wow interesting anybody else what else do you do Corina, perdón, podría repetir el suyo. It was no, Fatima. ¿quién habló? Ah, Fátima. Ah. ah, perdón. Fátima. Hello, uh, I take um, it's right. She takes X rays. Yes. Ah, ya, ya, ya. Ok, gracias. Ajá, uh -huh. X-rays. That's interesting. 
and kind of dangerous, right? Sasa. Sasa. <laughs> okay. Do you just take them or do you, you also read them? ¿Solo los toma o también los lee, Fátima? Solamente los toma. Okay, okay. Wow, interesting. Anybody else? What do you do? You take calls, have meetings, um, send reports, supervise people. Perdón, para decir, eh, estuve en servicio al cliente. Uh, servicio al cliente. You can say, I assist customers. And I assist customer. Okay, I assist customer. And this is like uh, very important. And thank you so much, Corina. Because uh, sometimes we think that assist is asistir de, de, como de asistencia, de llegar, de presentarse a un lugar, pero no. Cuando es, eh, ese sería attend. Por ejemplo, I attend meetings. Yo, esto sí es asistir de llegar a un lugar, de hacerse presente. Attend. Entonces, yo llego o me presento en meetings. Ajá, me hago presente en las meetings. Eso es attend. Ahora, para decir ayudo, assist. I assist customers. Uh -huh. Es como darle servicio, darle asistencia o atención. Um, a un cliente. I assist customer. Si también tienen reuniones y van a reuniones, you can say I attend meetings. Any other volunteer or anything else that you would like to know? Si no saben cómo decirlo, podemos ayudarles. Y para decir cómo revisar el reporte diario de venta, pero no sé si sería review um, daily sale report. Yes, you can say I review review uh, daily sales report o eh, puede utilizar también check de revisar como chequear. Check. I check daily daily sales report. O puede decir review también. Any other question? What other activities do you do? Are they similar? Are they different? I provide payment support and send reports. Oh, you provide tech support and send reports. That's interesting. Sounds stressful. <laughs> Is it stressful? Very, very stressful. Sounds like, yes. Okay, anybody else? I see you perform very, very different activities. So you can write the list here, at least five activities you do. And well, that is about us. Eh, decíamos que cuando hablamos de nosotros, que es la primera persona, etcétera, los verbos pues se mantienen normales, ¿verdad? Send, write, assist, attend, check, etcétera. Cuando hablamos en I, you, we, they. Pero cuando es la tercera persona singular, era lo que decíamos ayer, pues los verbos a la mayoría se les agrega S, ¿verdad? Cuando estamos haciendo oraciones afirmativas. Y eso es lo que podemos ver acá en las palabras que están en negrita. Esta conversación es del material que se descarga de la plataforma. 
Esa no tenemos audio, la vamos a practicar. Yo la voy a leer para ustedes y luego ustedes la practican. Eh, creo que Janet, Cindy, sí, sería en pareja. Let's see. Good morning, Cindy. How are you? Fine. I have many things to do this week, but Katie is very busy. Really? Who is Katie? The new secretary. Her schedule is very tight. On Monday, she makes many phone calls. Later, she writes reports about production. And what does she do the other days? On Wednesdays, she sends some emails to the bookkeeper. And on Friday, she arranges meetings. She is so busy. And on weekends? Okay, now that we read the conversation, is there any question about this vocabulary, maybe, or pronunciation? Lilibet, uh -huh. what is your question? What does tight mean? Tight, apretado, o ajustado. Thank you. You're welcome. Cuando hablamos en horario, eh, sí, sería decir que está bien ocupado, ajustado, apretado. También se puede aplicar a ropa. Si la ropa es muy ajustada, es tight. <ríe> y tight también son las medias. So it has a, like a, two different meanings. Is there any other question? Do you have any other question? If there are no more questions, we can practice a conversation. Let's see. I need two volunteers to start the role play. Yes, Corina. And I need someone else. Corina? We have one, Laura, thank you so much. You can start, Corina. Yes, I, good morning, Cindy, how are you? Fine, I have many things to do this week, but Katie is very busy. Really, who, who is Katy? The new secretary, her shuttle is very tight. On Monday, she makes many phone calls. Later, later she writes report about the production. And what does she do the other days? On Wednesday, she sends some emails to the bookkeeper. 
And on Friday, she arranged meetings. She is so busy. busy. She is so busy. Busy and on week, weekends. Uh -huh. And on weekend. Okay, we're going to review is this word schedule. I know it's difficult. Ske, moka sir skeleto. Ske, ske, jewel, schedule, schedule, schedule. And the other one was production, production, como production. And that's it. Now you can start, Laura. You start now. Okay. Good morning, Cindy. How are you? Fine. I have many things to do this week, but Katy is very busy. 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 Really? Who is Katie? The new secretary. Her is schedule. Schedule is very tight. On Monday, she makes many phone calls. Later, she writes reports about the production. And what does she do the other days? On Wednesday, she sends some email to the bookkeeper. Bookkeeper. And on Friday, she ar arranges. Arrange Arrangers meetings. She's so busy. And on weekends? Okay, pretty good. Thank you so much, Laura and Corina. You did it very well. I know the word schedule is very difficult. Yes, esa palabra es bien difícil, pero no es imposible, solo es práctica. Lo hicieron muy bien. Eh, sí, cuesta un poquito. So, schedule. Schedule. And then, um, La de los arrangers es como los Avengers. <laughs> arranges. He arranges meeting. Okay, uh, do we have two more volunteers? Two more? Two more volunteers? Okay, Eduardo and Lilibet. You can start, Lilibet. Good morning, Cindy. How are you? Fine, I have many things to this week, but Katie is very busy. Really? Who is Katie? The new secretary. Her schedule is very tight on Monday. She makes many phone calls. Later, she writes reports and about the production. And what does she do the other days? On Wednesday, she sends some emails to bookkeeper, and Friday, she arranges meetings. She's so busy. She's so busy, and on weekends. Okay. Now you can start, Eduardo. Okay. Good morning, Cindy. How are you? Fine. I have many things to do this week, but Katie is very busy. Really? Who is Katie? The new secretary. Her schedule is very tight. On Monday, she makes any phone calls. Later, later, she writes reports about the production. And what does she do the other day? On Wednesday, she sends some emails to the bookkeeper. And on Friday, she arranges meet meetings. She's so, she's, so she's so busy. And on weekends? Okay, excellent. You did an excellent job. Thank you so much for role-playing for us. Um, do we have two more volunteers? Two more volunteers. Okay, thank you so much for your participation. You're doing a very, very good job. Now, about this conversation, we're going to complete the exercise number three. As in, you know, in this conversation, then mention some activities of Katie's daily routine. So what we're going to do is to 
write them down, read the conversation again. If it is necessary, I think it is. We are going to read it and complete the chart with the information about Katie and also write other activities that you think Katie did the other days of the week. Like for example, on weekends, it doesn't say here. Okay, mm -hmm. hay algunos días que no dice ahí, como por ejemplo los fines de semana. Aquí no dice qué es lo que hace ella. Eh, algunos días sí. Entonces los días de los cuales tenemos la información, eh, vamos a escribirla aquí donde corresponda. Tenemos los días Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Entonces, eh, por ejemplo, on Monday, ¿qué dice que hace los lunes? She makes many phone calls. And that is exactly correct. She makes many phone calls. Entonces aquí escribimos en Monday, she makes many phone calls. ¿Y qué más hace los lunes? Menciona otra actividad. She writes reports about the production. Mm -hmm. She makes many phone calls. She writes reports about the production. Entonces, eso es lo que menciona el lunes. Lo vamos a escribir acá. Y luego eh, menciona que más on Wednesday. Menciona lo que hace los miércoles. On Wednesdays, she sends some emails to the bookkeeper. Y on Friday, she arranges meeting. Pero no tenemos información de Tuesday, ni de Thursday, ni Saturday, ni Sunday. Ustedes van a escribir ahí qué es lo que creen que ella hace esos otros días. Remember to use. Acuérdense de usar los verbos en eh, conjugados en la tercera persona singular, meaning that we're going to add ES. To most of them, en algunos solamente van a agregar S, etc. I'll give you time. Let me know when you're ready to share your work.
perdón, teacher, si digamos quiero, eh, aquí ando así como que algo perdidita, para decir, si ella, ella fue a visitar a sus abuelos, sería, she go visit her o her grand, grandparents. Escribimos she y un verbo nada más. Y visit. Sería she visit. Ajá. She. Y a ese le agregaríamos nada más ese, ¿verdad? She visits. ¿Cuál Ajá. es el su de ella? Her. Ajá. Her grandparents. Ah, sí. Es que ahí tenía. Bueno, a eso quería corregir. Thank you. She visits. Yeah. Her grandparents. Uh -huh. Excellent. Uh -huh. Ahí se las escribí en el chat Thank también. You. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Hola, una pregunta. Es que el mismo se puede reunir antes o qué tenemos que hacer. Perdón. Es que tuve problemas con el internet, entonces me sacó, entonces no, no escuché las indicaciones. Ahorita, bueno, ya practicamos la conversación que está ahí. Tenemos que completar el horario de, de Katy que, con las actividades que están aquí. Por ejemplo, ¿qué es lo que hace los lunes? Aquí nos menciona, on Monday, she makes many phone calls and later she writes reports. Lo escribimos aquí en Monday y luego en Wednesday. También la actividad que hace los viernes aquí en Friday. Los días que no sabemos porque no los menciona en la conversación como Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday, ustedes tienen que poner qué es lo que piensan ustedes que Katy hace en esos días. Thank you. You're welcome. Teacher. Hola. Uh, how, how do you say eh, destruir papeles in English? Distribuir papeles. Destruir. Ah. Destruir, eh, poner en la, en la destructora de papeles, ¿no? cosas así. La shred documents. Ahí se las escribí en el chat. Ese es el shred. Es, es, no sé si lo hacen con alguna maquinita que es la que es. Ahí sí se llama shredder que es para hacer los papeles en pedacitos, más que yeah. si tienen yeah. documentos o información importante, y es shred documents. Okay. Ahí se les escribí en el meeting chat. You're welcome.
es una pregunta con relajarse en tercera persona es relax al final yes that is correct relaxes with es excellent uh -huh. relaxes yes. you're welcome
Okay, uh, volunteers to share. What do you have? What do you think Kat is due to the other days? Haven't you finished? Do you need more time? Finish, teacher. Okay. Would you like to share? Mm, yo le escribí en mi cuaderno, pero lo puedo intentar leer. Yeah, you can read it. Lo puede leer. Okay. Monday, ya le habíamos dicho, she makes many phone calls. She writes reports about the production. Tuesday, she meets with the bots. Wednesday, she sends some emails to the bookkeeper. Thursday, she reviews production reports. Friday, she arranges meetings. Saturday, she prints reports for meetings. And Sunday, it's her day off. Okay, excellent. You did a very nice job, Laura. Thank you so much for sharing. Anybody else? Alguien más quisiera leerlas? What do you have? Do you have a, I'm sure that you have different things. Yo. Okay, thank you, Carolina. Sunday. She cooks for her mother. Uh, Saturday, she washes her clothes. No sé si se pronuncia. Yes. Uh, Thursday, she runs in the park. Cuatro, she travels for her downtown. Yes. Travels to her town. To her town. Okay. Excellent. That's very nice. Saturday, she washes her clothes and Sunday stood for her mother. That was very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, anybody else? No? Nobody else? Okay, I'll stop sharing for a while and we're going to check attendance. After I check attendance, we're going to continue. And let's get this one. Okay, Andrea Marisol. Andrea Marisol Alemán. Blanca Luz Joven. Present. Thank you. Carolina Beatriz. Present. Thank you. Claudia Stephanie. Corina Yamile. Present. Thank you. Eduardo Luis. Present. Thank you. Edwin Marvin. Present. Thank you. Fatima Claribel. Present. Thank you. Irving Alexis. Jacqueline Michel. Catherine Stephanie. Present. Present. Lily Bethel Carmen. Present. 
Gauss, no sé si me escuchó. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Laura. Sí. Luis Omar. María Guadalupe. Natalie Mireya. Rosalinda. Y Xiomara. Gracias. Xiomara Marisela. Thank you, Xiomara. Okay, we're going to continue with the class. So, um, well, for the simple present in the third person. Ya habíamos hablado esto también el día de ayer. El presente simple en la tercera persona en oraciones afirmativas y negativas. Um, decíamos que para hacer oraciones afirmativas, el verbo se va a modificar agregando S a la mayoría de ellos. E S para las excepciones que vimos ayer, cuando terminan en SH, TCH, SS, X, O, etc. Y también vimos las excepciones cuando estos verbos terminan en Y. Por ejemplo, carry, lo que está viendo aquí, he carries boxes into the trap. Y esto solo lo vamos a aplicar en oraciones afirmativas cuando estemos hablando de la tercera persona singular. Cuando son negativas, se usa el auxiliar doesn't que en su forma completa es does not y el verbo no se modifica. El verbo se deja en forma simple porque ya el auxiliar nos está indicando que es una tercera persona. Eh, Ese es solo como es un review. Vamos a completar las oraciones con los verbos que tenemos en paréntesis y esto... Ahí tienen, aquí van a ver ustedes si van a modificar el verbo o no. Por ejemplo, la primera. He, y tenemos order everything in the office. El verbo es order. ¿Qué vamos, ¿Cómo lo vamos a poner? ¿Está así, así como está o le vamos a hacer algo? Agregar S. Excelente, Catherine. Le vamos a agregar S. So, nos va a quedar... Orders. ¿Por qué? Porque es una oración afirmativa y es tercera persona singular, que es he, ¿verdad? He orders um, everything in the office. Y así van a proceder con la dos, tres, cuatro. Esta sería la cinco y esta sería la seis. Y van a ir viendo. Si dice not, es que va a ser negativa, pero sabemos que el auxiliar Deberá ser don't or doesn't, dependiendo, ¿verdad? Te lo voy a dejar trabajando en esto y me avisan cuando estén listos para chequear. Si hicimos un buen trabajo o si necesitamos refuerzo.
Have you finished or you need more time? Can we check now? I'm finished. Okay, so why do you have a number two? Amy and Teresa ask for the signatures every Friday. Excellent, ask. In this case, we do not modify because it's two. No es tercera singular, hay dos personas, so yes, not necessary to modify. Excellent, Eduardo. Uh, volunteer for number three, Helen. What do you have number three? Perdón, perdón, me puede repetir la, la que acaban de decir. Ok, me perdí, perdón. La two. Number two. Ask. 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 Con S. Sin S. Sin S, porque no es singular. Es, eh, sino que son Amy y Teresa, entonces ya son dos personas, sería un, no es singular, entonces ask. Thank you. Uh, Lily Beth, number three. Helen doesn't call the design department on weekends. Excellent, doesn't call. Very good. Uh, number four. Volunteer for number four, she. She cleans our desk in the morning. Excellent, that is correct, Laura. She cleans our desk in the morning. Uh, number, well, that should be five. Um, let's see, Catherine, do you have the number five? I need breaks and need as a little bit thinking we need at night I am. Excellent. I right. Thank you so much, Catherine. And last one, number six. Uh volunteer for number six. Um, Mario Mario doesn't keep a record of merchandise he buys. Okay, very good. Doesn't keep a uh, record of the merchandise he buys. Excellent, thank you so much. And that's it. Okay, uh, so all your answers are correct. You're doing a very good job with this topic. This is one of the most difficult, but you're doing it great. Thank you so much. And then um, we have this, uh, this conversation so we can complete it. Eh, el ejercicio es completar esta conversación, pero a veces resulta un poquito um, como confuso, ¿verdad? Ya que es como, ¿y cómo le sigo aquí? ¿Cuál era la idea? Etcétera. Entonces podemos hacer algo similar más adelante. Eh, work power, jobs. Tenemos algunas oh, ocupaciones, trabajos acá y vamos a encontrar vocabulario nuevo. Eh, so we're going to repeat. Ayer vimos algunas, fue una lista bastante extensa. Eh, pues el vocabulario bastante sencillo. La mayoría de ocupaciones de la lista de ayer ya la conocían. Hoy tenemos otra pequeña lista acá de la que tal vez se repitan algunas. Eh, estoy segura que van a encontrar algún par de nuevas. Entonces, el ejercicio aquí es to match. Eh, va este a hacer un match de las ocupaciones, pero pues les voy a poner el audio y ustedes la van a ir viendo ahí cuál es cada ocupación. Creo que voy a tener que hacerlo más pequeño para que sea completo. Ahí pues ven los cuadritos, eh, tienen eh, diferentes como... Hacer un parque no tan chiquitito. Ya no puedo más. Ahí. Ok. Um, 
tenemos los números y tienen ahí el K ya está hecho, number one, K, police officer, y así los van a ir escuchando. Eh, number two, this is the number three, number four, five, y ahí los tienen. Eh, vamos a escuchar y luego me dicen si tienen alguna pregunta sobre el vocabulario. Unit 8. What do you do? Page 50, exercise 1. Word power. Jobs. Part A. Match the jobs with the pictures. Then listen and practice. 1. K. Police officer. 2. O. Taxi driver. 3. P. Vendor. 4. J. Plumber. 5. E. Electrician. 6. I. Painter. 7. H. Office manager. 8. A. Accountant. 9. L. Receptionist. 10. F. Front desk clerk. 11. B. Bellhop. 12. G. Nurse. 13. D. Doctor. 14. M. Salesperson. 15. C. Cashier. 16. N. Security Guard. Okay, do you have any question? New vocabulary? Teacher, can you repeat the audio again? Sure. Unit 8. What do you do? Page 50, Exercise 1. Word Power. Jobs. Part A. Match the jobs with the pictures. Then listen and practice. 1. K. Police officer. 2. O. Taxi driver. 3. P. Vendor. 4. J. Plumber. 5. E. Electrician. 6. I. Painter. 7. H. Office manager. 8. A. Accountant. 9. L. Receptionist. 10. F. Front desk clerk. 11. B. Bellhop. 12. G. Nurse. 13. D. Doctor. 14. M. Salesperson. 15. C. Cashier. 16. N. Security Guard.
Okay, questions? No questions. We're going to be using this vocabulary in the upcoming exercises. So that's why it's necessary for you to have that vocabulary clear. Fatima? Sí, una pregunta. Salesperson y vendor, los dos son vendedores. Yes, and the only difference, la única diferencia es que el eh, vendor es como, digamos, un vendedor eh, informal, digamos, o, o vendedor, persona que se dedica a vender tal vez en las calles, es como un independiente, ¿verdad? Y el salesperson es para alguien que se dedica a las ventas en algún almacén, en algún lugar este donde está empleado como vendedor, ¿verdad? Es como más formal, digamos, un vendedor formal de un almacén y el otro pues sería más informal, ¿verdad? Un vendedor de la calle, por ejemplo. Uh -huh. Y en front es clear, es recepcionista y receptionist. ¿Cuál es la diferencia? El front desk clerk es más como para un hotel, digamos. Es un eh, eh, receptionist, es más de como de, de oficinas en general. Un front desk clerk es como más de un hotel y puede que las actividades que ellos hagan sean un poquito más eh, variadas. En el caso de las recepcionistas, algunas recepcionistas, aparte de de recepcionistas también hacen trabajo como de secretaria, ¿verdad? De escribir cheques, quedan, este, y cuestiones así, a redactar cartas. Um, en front desk clerk no hace tanto actividades así, que a veces las recepcionistas la hacen de secretaria también. Los front desk clerk no son más como de atención al cliente en un vestíbulo. Ok, thank you. Any other question? ¿Alguna otra pregunta? So you're asking very good questions. Son muy buenas preguntas. No sé si tienen alguna otra. Okay, so then we're going to move on with the material we have here. So just let me do any shares. Sí. Okay, this is, esto lo tienen en la guía que les mandé. And then we have a workplace. This is a vocabulary exercise. Who works in these places? Complete the chart with jobs from exercise one and add one more job to each list. Vamos a completar este cartelito con trabajos de acá. Este es el ejercicio 1. Eh, dependiendo del workplace. Si trabajan en un hospital, in a hospital, in an office, in a store, or in a hotel. For example, in, an, in a hospital, we have doctor, nurse, Eh, tenemos alguien más de un hospital aquí. Doctor, nurse. We have to add one more to the list. Tenemos que agregar una más. ¿Qué podría ser? Alguien más que trabaje. Sorry. Sugestion. Or? Yes, it can be a receptionist. Uh -huh. Is ser surgery? Un... Ah, yes, a, a surgeon. Uh -huh. A surgeon. Uh -huh. Doctor, nurse, surgeon. Uh -huh. 
Y lo mismo acá en el office. ¿Qué tenemos que trabajar en la oficina de acá? Podemos poner a... Uh, office manager. Office manager. Accounting. Accounting. Y tenemos que agregar alguna que no esté en la lista. Tal vez sería mejor. Eh, luego, in a store and finally in a hotel. No, eso no se activa. Teacher, y en in a store, el customer service se podría poner, o eso es como el área. Eh, Puede ser algún agente de servicio al cliente, agregarle agent, customer care agent. Ah, ok. Mm -hmm. Ya si es el área, uno le agrega department, customer service department.
teacher, tengo una duda. In, in a store, eh, el front desk clerk sería correcto o eso es solo como para eh, cosas de servicios, como los hoteles. Ajá, sí, un front desk clerk es más como similar a un recepcionista, entonces en una tienda creo que no, hay como un área de servicio al cliente, pero no están como tales como front desk clerk. Ok, uh -huh. ok, gracias. Ok. Okay, let's listen to a uh, volunteer. Uh, what do you have in an office? Volunteer? Yo tengo office manager, okay. receptionist, y secretary. Excellent. Thank you so much, Laura. Does anybody have something different? I have office manager, accountant, and human resource specialist. Excellent. That is very good as well. Thank you so much, Eduardo, Laura. Anybody else? Okay, in a store, volunteer, what do you have? What do you have in a store? Cashier. Security okay. guard, salesperson. Excellent. Cashier, security guard, and salesperson. Good. Now, last, in a hotel? Te vas a caer. Mm. 
in a hotel? Uh, security guard. Yo le agregué otras que no estaban en el cuadro. Por ejemplo, chef. Ok, chef, a security guard. Uh -huh. Office manager. Uh -huh. Electric, electrician. Electrician. Electri electric, ¿cómo, perdón? Electrician. <ríe> electrician. electrician. Uh, cashier. Uh, plumber. Uh, this watcher. Okay. Bartender. And gar gardener. Excellent. Fantastic. You did a very nice job with that part. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing. All right. So about the activities or particular things about some professions, we have this vocabulary, uh, uh, wears a uniform, for example, stands all day, sits all day, handles money, talks to people, works at night, works hard, makes a lot of money. Once again, wears a uniform, stands all day, sits all day, handles money, talks to people, works at night, works hard, makes a lot of money. Do you have any question about this uh, vocabulary? Handles money. Handles money, maneja dinero. Manejar mm. o manipular. Manipula dinero. Any other question? ¿Algo otra pregunta en el vocabulario? Okay, um, for this vocabulary, um, the important thing is that the more vocabulary you have, the more easier English is. Entre más vocabulario, pues es más fácil para ustedes el, el, el idioma, ¿verdad? Entonces, la práctica va a ser oraciones utilizando lo que tenemos acá. Por ejemplo, wears a uniform. ¿Saben qué significa el verbo wear? Wear, la primera que está aquí, wears a uniform. Vestir. Vestir. Catherine, Eduardo, vestir. vestir lo que llevamos puesto. Todo lo que uno lleva encima, lo que uno lleva puesto, se utiliza el verbo wears. Por ejemplo, eh, lentes, eh, puede ser lentes, no puedo decir I use glasses, I wear glasses. Okay, because they are me. I wear glasses. Um, uh, most of the time, I, I don't wear a uniform, for example. Yo no visto, no uso uniforme. I don't wear a uniform. I, most of the time, I wear casual clothes, etc. So, todo lo que uno viste lleva puesto es wear. So, you can say, most of the time, I wear sandals. Okay. La mayoría del tiempo yo uso o ando puestas sandalias. I wear sandals most of the time, etc. Entonces, ¿qué vamos a hacer con esto? Wears a uniform. So we add someone. Tenemos que agregar una profesión o ocupación que pegue con esa. Por ejemplo, uh, podemos decir a security guard wears a uniform. A nurse wears a uniform. A doctor wears a uniform, etc. Okay, I'll give you time uh, for you to write your sentences. Van a escribir al menos un ejemplo con cada una de ellas, ¿verdad? You can write them on your notebook and then we share.
Eh, disculpe, ¿cómo se dice? Bom, bombero este que es fighter. Be, be there. Fire, fighter. Fighter, fighter. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
teacher. Yes. Uh, corredor de bolsa in English is broker. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Okay, let's listen to your examples. What do you have with the first one? Where's the uniform? Who wears the uniform? The soldiers wears a uniform. Okay, uh, a soldier wears a uniform. Okay, thank you so much. Any other example?
for where is the uniform? The chef wears a uniform. Excellent. The chef wears a uniform. Any other example? The students wears a uniform. Okay. Thank you so much. Now, stands all day. Second word, stands all day. Who stands all day? I don't stay all day in my work. Oh, you stand all of your day? Okay, thank you. Anybody else? A security guard stands all day. Uh-huh. A security guard stands all day. Uh-huh. One more, one more example. Uh huh. Any other example? Um, the factory worker. Excellent. A factory worker stands all day. Now, the opposite, who sits all day? Who sits all day? A receptionist sits all day. In a Excellent. Cashier. A receptionist sits all day. A cashier sits all day. One more. Secretary. Yes, a secretary sits all day. Thank you so much. Now, handles money. Who handles money? Cashier handles money every day. Cashier. Okay, good, Catherine. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Cashier, who else handles money? Vendor handles money. Yes, excellent. A vendor handles money. Any other example? The banker handles money. Yes, excellent. Banker uh, handles money um, and uh, very good. Thank you so much. Now we have cashier. This is un cashier and en los bancos se llaman bank teller. Ahí se los escribí en el chat. Bank teller. Esos son los del banco, son en cualquier una tienda, en un restaurante, etcétera, les conocen como cashier. Nosotros aquí les decimos cajeros también a los del banco, pero en inglés ellos se llaman, eh, eh, la profesión los, es, son bank teller. Ahí se los escribí en el meeting chat. A bank teller handles money. Uh -huh. Perdón, eh, yo, yo había encontrado solo teller. Uh, no, teller. Teller, sino que solo teller. Mm, es solo teller es como general. Eh, bank teller es porque también está el ATM, el cajero automático por sus siglas eh, es Aromatic Teller Machine. Entonces, por eso se, se especifica que es automático, ¿verdad? Porque es un cajero automático. Automatic Teller Machine. Por eso se llaman ATM. Y luego está la persona que es Bank Teller. Pero se puede decir nada más Teller. Eh, también es correcto. 
Thank you. Okay, any other question or comment? I can see it is for the stop. Ajá, cashier es para tiendas, eh, almacenes, restaurantes. Correcto, Catherine. Mm, sí. De banco son teller. Más específico podemos decir bank teller. And uh, let's continue with talks to people. Who talks to people? What do you have? A front desk clerk talks to people. Yes, a front desk clerk talks to people. Very good example. Any other? The teacher talks to people. Excellent. Thank you so much, Fatima. A teacher talks to people. Secretary. Mm -hmm. Excellent. A secretary talks to people. Now, work at night. Who work at night? Nurse, doctor. A nurse works at night. Mm -hmm. Doctor. A doctor works at night. Uh -huh. A bellhop. Excellent. A bellhop works at night. Now, who works hard? A brick lawyer works hard. A uh, librarian? I'm uh, sorry, I didn't get it. Who works hard? A uh, brick layer. Oh, yes, a brick layer. Yes, that's a very hard word. Mm -hmm. Any other example? Sample. I'm sorry. A farmer. a farmer works hard. A farmer, yes. Yes, that's a very hard too. Good example. One more. So we have a bricklayer, a farmer. Who else works hard? The construction. Yes, excellent. A construction worker works hard. Very good, Catherine. Thank you so much. Now, who makes a lot of money? Who makes a lot of money? A stock broker makes a lot of money. Yes, a stock broker makes a lot of money. Yes. Any other? A lawyer makes a lot of money. Mm -hmm. One more. Who else makes a doctor? Oh, yes, a doctor makes a lot of money, especially plastic surgeons. <laughs> okay, now um, I'm going to check attendance one more time. Let me stop sharing for a little while. And uh, get the bio. Okay, Andrea Marisol Aleman. Blanca Luz Jovel. Present. Thank you. 
Carolina Beatriz Escalante. Claudia Stephanie Funes. Corina Yamilet Alfaro. Present. Thank you. Eduardo Luis Santillana. Present. Thank you. Edwin Marvin Montoya. Present. Thank you. Fatima Claribel Majano. Present. Thank you. Irving Alexis Aguirre. Jacqueline Michelle Guevara. Perdón, me había levantado al baño. Carolina Escalante. Oh, ok, thank you so much. En el baño. Yes. Ok. Right. Uh, Catherine Stephanie Pérez. Present. Thank you. Laura Regina Andrade. Present. Thank you. Uh, Lili Betel Carmen Alfaro. Present. Thank you. Luis Omar Ortiz. María Guadalupe Mexicano. Natalie Mireya Escobar. Rosalinda Portillo. Xiomara Marisela. Present. Okay, thank you. Oh, let me continue sharing. Um, we have a conversation in your material. You can see it there. Uh, for this one, yes, I do have the audio that we're going to listen and practice for a couple of minutes. Mm. Okay, so you see here two ladies are talking, Rachel and Angela, and we have this scenario. It's probably worth. What do you think when you see this picture? Is it in an office, a hospital, a hotel? They are in a In a hotel. Yes, they are in a hotel. Let's listen to the conversation. Page 51, exercise three, conversation. He works in a hotel. Listen and practice. Where does your brother work? In a hotel. Oh, really? My brother works in a hotel too. He's a front desk clerk. How does he like it? He hates it. He doesn't like the manager. That's too bad. What hotel does he work for? The plaza. That's funny. My brother works there too. Oh, that's interesting. What does he do? Actually, he's the manager. Oh, sounds like somebody is in trouble. Okay, so uh, is there any question about the uh, vocabulary or pronunciation? Maybe we can define vocabulary and pronunciation today and tomorrow we will practice. Do we have questions? Tenemos preguntas? No questions. Okay, if you don't have any questions, or well, in my from my end, I just can um point out the pronunciation of this word. Interesting, interesting. Um, that can be like um, uh, es la que a veces suena es como un poquito difícil por lo que la um asociamos con español. Eh, por ejemplo, el, el, en español el acento o la fuerza de voz 
está casi en el medio, decimos interesante. Pero en esta, la fuerza se hace al inicio. Interesting. Interesting. Entonces, es de acostumbrarse y practicarla mucho. Aparte, la primera E no se menciona. Interesting. 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 Y la otra palabra que quiero que sí se mentalicen bien es que actually, este actually que ven ahí, no es actualmente. Ese actually es como decir en verdad o a decir verdad. En realidad. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, y that's for tomorrow. Mañana vamos a estar practicando. Igual si de repente se les olvida qué significaban esa palabrita, pues ahí vamos a hacer, vamos a hacer un refresh. Um, so, eso sería todo por ahora. Gracias por acompañarme y unirse a la sección. Y nos vemos mañana. So I hope that you sleep well. See you tomorrow. Don't forget to work in the platform. See you tomorrow. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.